We're back and this, as we said, is Holy Week. And during the course of Lent, we had a segment called Inspiration Now. And we've been seeing so many gospel artists and their videos. And I was marveling at how excellent the gospel artists are in terms of their work. And someone who has been working assiduously over the past few years, some many years actually, in the gospel arena is Jamie Thomas, who started in just around 1993 or so with Margaret Elcock, as we saw on TVC, that's Trinidad Broadcasting, on a program called Family Focus. And then he went on to Urban Gospel on 98.9 FM Radio Yo, if you remember those days in 1994, just about then. And he started the Vibe Concert Series at Upper Level Club. I smile because those were my party time days, 1995. He went on to the Cayman Islands and uh, to a radio station called Heaven, 97 FM. And uh, in 2000, came back to 94 FM. So he's been on a number of radio stations, worked on the production of The Pilgrimage. And um, you know he's worked on Perfect 10, which was the groundbreaking uh, 10 hours of gospel music. And uh, then went on to Radio Tempo, where he started a program called uh, Rise and Shine, which produced, uh, which produced the opportunity for so many gospel artists to present their videos. And then, of course, in 2012, there was the launch of 107.1 The Word. And, uh, and then he presented the Caribbean Marlin Awards, President Award recipient, event producer, manager, Benehilet Blackman, Jamie Thomas. Good morning. Good morning, Lisa. <laughs> and we're calling this segment Jamie Thomas, how Jamie Thomas helped build an industry. I think it's so important for us to recognize persons because, you know, sometimes we see history starts the day you were born <laughs> because people forget what went before. And I was really looking at the videos yesterday of Yanni and Nisa and so on, I'm say, and Blessed Messenger and all these artists who are really just so excellent in what they do. And I'm thinking how many years ago when I think we had a conversation, for example, in Miami Airport many years ago, you were saying, you know, Lisa, this is what I want to do, and I want to do this, and I want to do that. You were talking about your vision for the industry, and now, so many years later, what are you thinking now that you see the industry so alive and thriving? Well, first of all, happy Easter to everybody. This is the first time that I'm doing, I haven't been on Skype in years. <laughs> I will have to download Zoom. Um, so, you know, even in the midst of all of this that's going on, I guess there are positives to take away. Yeah. Um, I can't remember. I can't believe that you remember that conversation. I in do. The because yeah. actually the show that I'm doing now on Tempo in Caribbean, that was an early, early, early. It uh, was. Yes. Of it. Um, to look mm -hmm. back uh, after so many years, uh, it has a lot of mixed feelings. Um, sometimes, uh, you know, it, it seems as if, what are we doing? You know, we're doing, we believe in this, we believe we have a positive message for Trinidad and Tobago and for the world. Um, I had the opportunity to go to Dr. Miles Monroe's church a lot, and I became a Marlin Award judge and recipient. So I've seen, you know, this thing grow from maybe one box of music and mm -hmm. some CDs to just so many releases, especially with uh, W107 coming online in the last eight years, mm -hmm. it's an explosion. So I, we, I, I feel blessed to be a part, just one part of a, a very big thing. Um, I always pay tribute to Margaret Elcock and to Louis Lee Singh for giving me the opportunity because without them opening the doors for me, I would not mm -hmm. um, have had this opportunity. So I look back and I give thanks to see that now um, to conclude this question, where uh, an artist, you couldn't do a gospel concert without an, uh, an international artist coming. Right. If you're to be sure to be a sell-off, now you have people like Jaron Nurse and Positive yes. um, that bring, uh, you know, are bringing out, mm -hmm. you know, 10,000 people for a local gospel so event. Now, so you now, you, instead of an international artist, you need to have a Jaron or Positive yeah. on your concert, right? <laughs> Yeah, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is something to that's something to celebrate, you know. So um And what I like about it too, Jamie, is the fact that, you know, the music has crossed over so that the message crosses over. Because I remember when um, Isaac Blackman did to the ceiling and he was yeah. performing in some of the nightclubs and people were saying, Why are you performing there? He said, If I could take my message there, then I am crossing over, my message is getting 
to the persons who probably need to hear it more than those who are in the churches. And um, the fact that the music has opened up so much now, I think the messages are crossing over. You see young people getting more involved and listening to uh, more positive, inspiring music. Yes. Very, very important. I mean, even with Tempo One, uh, Frederick Morton is another person I have to recognize, you know, that was uh, previously an MTV affiliate. And I told him that in my first meeting in New York with him, I said, you know, I got to commend you for uh, putting some sort of inspirational programming onto Tempo, which was Rise and Shine. And, um, you know, be without these people and, and that particular um, opportunity to be uh, producer and presenter for Rise and Shine was amazing for Caribbean gospel. That's how Isaac Blackman's song, Jumping to the Ceiling. I remember when he shot it, we were there, as you said, in the perfect 10 on I-95. He came in, did a scene inside there. And to see where that video went with Tempo at that time, Ceiling, he took him to Africa. Oh, um, and okay. Yeah. And Jamie, um, what would you say would have been your most challenging experience over the years because you know sometimes persons are now at the point where they're starting off and they're thinking is it worth it should i stick with this and uh you know maybe i should do something that is easier brings money easier to me that kind of thing what would have been your biggest challenge over the years um definitely uh being a part of something was that was groundbreaking was not easy um, you know, we look back now, and I mean, even now, uh, they, you know, there are so many different religions and perspectives uh, on music, on styles of music, and you know, after twenty something, thirty years, there would still be that. Um, uh, so one of the challenging things was to kind of help people understand that the message doesn't change, but the medium needs to become adaptable. Just like now, who would have thought we would have been? sitting on the internet doing a meeting where people would have seen this technology as only negative and like anything in the world there's the positive and there's the negative so mm -hmm. one of the, the things i would say was a challenge was the journey itself was breaking ground and um letting people understand and dealing with all that and some people could deal with it and some people can't so right. for some artists because gospel is not a if I always say, if I maybe had stayed mainstream, I may have been much more advanced in my life. Mm -hmm. But in terms of you have to know what your calling is. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, I just kind of just stayed at times I was low, at times I felt like that. Like, I just want to give up, probably uh, very reflective of the Easter message where, you know, Jesus Christ was accepted. He wasn't accepted. He was rejected. Yeah. He could be crossed on the way you know, on, on the Via Della Rosa, if you want to say that, and give it up. But he yeah. pressed through to, to his purpose. So yeah. I know that, that has been, uh, that was uh, definitely challenging. Yeah. And I think gospel artists have been through that. Some of them are still doing it. Some of them just couldn't um, continue to. And um, uh, as I say, you know, I mean, God uh, loves everyone. And yeah. he understands where everyone is. And we may not understand people's choices at times, but... Our role is to just continue to love people through mm -hmm. what they're going through. So um, that would have been a challenge financially. Gospel wasn't, uh, there was no, I mean, before uh, W107 recently, when I came back in the last 10 years to Trinidad, there was no full time. Well, um, I mean, I guess there was, but options, let's say, for people who want to pursue this career may not be readily available. Yeah. And, and then finally, ministry is really a dimension of giving and also a dimension of living. So for people who do this full time or this is all they want to do, they're faced with this can't, I can't pay a mortgage on this or whatever mm -hmm. the case. So um, there are challenges, but when you see the results of people that have, uh, you know, can live a more happier life mentally, you know, because the word is in the music, that's rewarding to hear the stories that yeah. have come through the years. Jamie, in just our remaining moments, where do you see the industry growing now? What's next for you? Um, because some people might say, okay, he's done it. You could just kick back and retire, relax, or whatever you want to do now. Or where do you see this going, especially in light of a post-COVID world? Yeah. Um, I don't know. Um, we are now in the midst of this global pandemic, and we're, you know, we ju we're just trusting God. Um, yesterday, I actually did an interview on 107 with 
uh, Frederick Morton, and um, because he's been the head of litigations and, and, and content at Viacom for many years before moving on with his network. And I asked him that, and um, it was really a very real answer where he said, we just have to deal with now as now. Yeah. Um, things do change when we come out, but we are people of faith, so we're believing that, you know, the Bible says, um, God, all things work together for good mm -hmm. to them and trust God. And um, sometimes you really don't know. So where it goes next, I don't know. Um, in terms of me, I still want to see Caribbean gospel artists, really uh, inspirational artists, reach to international acclaim, even out of Trinidad and Tobago. So I still think that we are living to, um, I'm wanting to see that still. Yeah. And, um, and to right. just continue to take the message, that positive message to, to people, because it's helped me in my life. All and, right, Jamie. Uh, well, we gotta we gotta leave it there. But I want to thank you, and I know I didn't get a chance to congratulate you live on air in person. So congratulations on being an amazing creative director. That plane at the entrance of Carrie Festa and so on. Kimberly, one of our camera operators, just said, you know, what happened to the plane? Because I think everyone was just amazed by the work that you did and the creation that you built for the Carrie Festa. But thank you so much, Jamie, for joining me. I'm sorry you can't be in studio, so I can hug you up. <laughs> A virtual hug. A virtual hug. Jamie Thomas there. We're going to leave it there with Jamie Thomas. Oh, my gosh. And some of you might remember Jamie. He goes all the way back to party time. Yeah, he was on, I think it was Zero Defect. I can't remember the name of the group right now. It escapes me. But he was one who painted up the guy, who, the group that painted their face. Can be painted faces or Zero Defect. One of the two, right? But good morning to you, Jamie Thomas. And congratulations on keep doing the work that you're doing to build and just inspire. And we'll be back after this.